Hello Akron fans and welcome to the round three of the 2013 Christmas tournament which yeah has taken a while hopefully it will be done before Christmas 2014 but I'm not holding out hope I'm not guaranteeing anything I think we'll have it though but yeah we are it is kind of a bit slow going I'm afraid anyway the first match we're gonna have tonight is going to be between God and Monkuki and then after that Cybernetic Pony and Kitan it's gonna be round three tonight we already saw Losers Round 1 last week, uh, the last couple weeks, and Losers Round 2 will be afterwards, but yeah, it's kind of been a bit slowed down. But anyway, so whoever wins between God and Monkey moves on to the semifinals, and whoever loses is in Losers Round 3, similarly with Cyber Pony and Chitin. So we're going to be starting on Act Natural. Let's begin. So Act Natural, we have seen many a time, it is a map that is fairly popular because I'm not sure exactly why but I like it so I'm glad it's popular and it's also one of the I mean the thing is the maps are randomly chosen anyway Monkuki is starting out in the lower left corner of the map as Vekir and God is Grekim the northeast corner of the map so God is well, he's usually playing Grekim that's not at all surprising he's going for this probably on a map this size I'm guessing a couple Octos for scouting at first Though he may just decide to go purely for economy, assuming that he's not going to be attacked. Monkuki, on the other hand, is also setting up. He is setting out a couple scouts. Very common. I mean, Grekum is the only one that has a hard time setting out scouts, of course, because they have to build the Octos in order to make it work. But God is possibly not even going to do that. We'll see what he does. If he does send out a couple Echo Scouts, I would be surprised if he didn't at some point. But he may just, just be confident enough that he's going to be able to survive just building economy. Monkuki, on the other hand, of course, is sending out scouts since Vekir and Ciso basically start out with two free scouts. No reason not to take advantage of that. And Monkuki is also about a minute down from here, just setting up his economy as well. We'll see if anything happens before six resource processors, but typically six is the number that you should be going for. Once a player has six or so, it's usually when you see more strategy going on, but... God is going for a bit of a proxy from the looks of it. I mean... I think he's just echo scouting with his progen forces. I doubt it's actually going to be a full-on proxy. It looks like he is just setting that further in the future so that it's will he'll see what's going on in Monkey's base. However, I'm not sure that was done properly because it's not actually happening on any time wave. I mean, the thing is that that order. I'm pretty sure that order happened. Nope, never mind. The order happened further in the past. So God is relying on the green time to propagate that order, and then afterwards he will go back and undo that most likely, although he might just go for a proxy regardless. Wouldn't surprise me if he did, especially being this is game one of a series, he does basically have free reign to just do whatever he wants. If he loses, well, he can just come back in the next few games. And since he's good, he's probably not going to lose, or at least not that easily. He is a very, very, very strong real-time strategy game player, and he is God of Six LCRPs going to two QPRPs on top of that, while Monkuki on the other hand has, well, he's, about, he's three minutes down, so it's still hard to say. He's still building up his initial RPs. Not sure why he is being quite so meticulous about it. Oh, I see, of course, because he's playing against Grekum. I should not be surprised. He's clearly a bit worried about Octos coming in, getting an early... He's getting an early Zion Veers. He's getting an early Foundation. No, he's getting an early Depot instead. He does see Gold Scouts, and Gold Scouts do see that he, he is there, and that is going to basically... Well, that'll do it. I mean, God knows what Monkuki's up to. Monkuki thinks he knows what God is up to, although, let's see what happens here. I mean, is God going to undo that? And he probably will. We unfortunately missed him at that timeline point when he would have been undoing it. So, Monkuki does see sort of what's going on in God's base, but not particularly well. Now, Monkuki, on the other hand, is going for a minute and a half depot. Very. Well, it's kind of a risky strategy. I mean, a map like this is probably small enough to support that, but it's definitely on the edge of what can be supported due to the fact that start locations are diagonal from each other. That does change things. But also because, as I mentioned before, the old Vecure strategy of building a super early depot and trying to rush with that doesn't work so well because even start kind of basically makes that very difficult to pull off quickly, which was part of the point of even start. So the fact that you start with the 3RPs basically built for you slows that sort of strategy down to the point that it's not the most viable thing to do. 
But Monkuki has been playing Vekir the most out of anybody, so if he can, if anyone can pull it off, he certainly can. Well, I'm very curious to see what he's going to do with it. Gold, on the other hand, has of course returned his Progen duo to his base. Taking the scouting information he's seen as being correct and continuing to build up his economy. Focusing on some RPs on Q Plasma, and probably from there he will end up getting a reef fairly soon. Although he only has actually five RPs and in... Oh, interesting. So he actually he is still getting attacked though from the looks of it. Or at least he's No, that's not right. Checking Monkey's point of view. No, God simply has not he has decided to build a six RP on Q Plasma instead of building it on Liquid Crystal. So God's gonna be not really behind an economy. Not behind economically, but he's probably going to be still... Well, fairly... It's still a little bit unusual. It's still not what I'd expect, but 5 RPs isn't bad. And Cybernator Pony pointed out in the chat that the Arcticus can be used to scout, and in fact, it used to be. That was, in fact, the way that it was done for quite some time. For... until... Oh, I don't even remember when. It was... I think about a year ago was when it was popular. Just to send your Arcticus into the opponent's base, and actually, I think it might have been God who actually was doing this, where you'd send your Arcticus there, and then you'd use that with a leader, you'd give it a leader, and then use the leader to command the forces through the Arcticus, while the Arcticus is flying above their base, scouting everything, and it was really annoying, but I'm not quite sure why it stopped. I think it just wasn't really worth the micro cost. I honestly don't know exactly why it stopped, though. That was actually, that was a thing that was done. Anyway, Monkuki is... Getting a more reasonably timed depot now, getting a three minute depot. I guess he was a little bit concerned he'd need to counter rush before, but no, he is going for a three minute depot, which is much more typical. And Gold, on the other hand, has not gotten tech yet. He's going for an Octopod early on to get rid of the scout forces from Monkuki, and Monkuki's scout forces have basically dealt no damage. None of the RPs have been damaged. None of. I mean, Gold would have taken damage further in the future, but these have been chased off. I mean, all these orange marks. Those are when the RPs get closed forcibly. And we'll see that fade away as soon as the red time wave crosses all of that. It's just going to go right away. It's not going to have been a problem. Now, Depot is up for Monkuki. He does have a Zion Veer. He doesn't have... His scout forces are limping back home. They are alive. He did manage to escape with them. So he is going to... Well, we'll see in the blue time wave for sure if he didn't take any damage. And getting very early Halcyon class. This is definitely a well, late game focused move. Given the early Octopod, I guess he's assuming that God is not going for early tech or early air units so he can get away with teching up a bit more before attacking. However, God is going for pretty strong economy, and I imagine that Seppi with Reef will be coming very shortly, and he could easily get air units within two minutes. Very easily. Like by the seven minute mark from where he is now, getting air units is not a problem. And it looks like there it goes. He is getting a reef, he is getting Set up for a, well, possibly for a Spire, setting his Faro into a better position, but it looks like that's just for the Triad. This heavy appears to be for another Reef, probably. And Advanced Structures, there we go, that's part of it. That's the first part. Monkuki, on the other hand, he does have some Scout units set up. Are they? No, they appear to be just set up in case air units come in. That's not a bad place to put them. I would actually kind of put them a little bit to the left, but this isn't terribly bad. It does watch the ramp, so it's good in that sense. Halcyon class has been completed. Monkuki does have the ability to build a Zion Halcyon. That is what he's going for. Getting skip teleport on that, and probably going to be getting a couple more of those. I'm a little bit surprised he's going for that this early, just because Zion Halcyons are, while very tough, not the strongest units for cost. Now, using them as a way to... Excuse me, I have a bit of a cold. Using them as a way to tank for Zion Pulsers is not a bad idea. I... I'm curious to see how it's going to work on its own, though. I mean, Zion Halcyons, like I said, are very tough. And the one thing that they have that Zion Pulsers don't is toughness. Now, however, they do only deal 18 damage a second compared to the Zion Pulsar, which deals... Oh, actually, you know what? Okay, the Zion Pulsar deals less damage per second, but it's also a question of cost. Zion Pulsar 65-15 to Zion Halcyons 168-72. So Zion Halcyons are more than three times the cost of a Zion Pulsar for about one and a half times the DPS. So like I said, for cost, Zion Halcyons do not deal a whole lot of damage. But in terms of how much damage it's going to deal over the course of their lifetime when under attack, Zion Halcyons are a clear winner. So I can see exactly why he's going for that. He wants to be able to basically outlast that reef. And with only one reef, it should be possible. However, God, he does have a couple of Octopods. He probably, he does have answer, or Chronoporting very quickly. 
Not even going for Arians yet, going for Chrono Porting instead. Is he going to go for his Chrono Clone strategy? I don't think he's going to... He might try that, I don't know. If anyone's going to go for a Trixie Chrono, Chrono, Clone, Strat Chrono Clone strategy, it's going to be Gold. He is going to be the one to do it, because Gold is the one who has been doing it for some time now. And that Zion Halcyon is proving its worth. Killing off a couple of Octopods, taking a fair amount of damage in the process, but still killing off a couple of Octopods. This is happening near the Unplayable Past as well. Although it looks like the Octopods did damage enough, scared it away, and God apparently had built a couple more Octopods in the process. Monkey is going to need to move back these units as well. They are rushing to their doom. While well, Zion Halcyon has gotten back to base, has healed up, and a friend. Another Zion Halcyon has popped up. That will be useful, and... At this point, he'll have the damage output of three Zion Pulsers, which with like, three times the health. So you're basically paying more money for a more survivable unit. Definitely a useful thing to have, it's just that it's kind of tricky in terms of the cost. A great tank, though, and I really can't argue with using it. Now, Monkuki is going to be having to deal with some Arians soon, and this is probably a good reason why he chose Zion Halcyon as well, because they don't... they hit air. They don't deal a whole lot of damage to air. They have about a quarter of the damage output for air compared to ground, but still, they deal a lot of damage. And they will last long enough. They will be able to hit air. Unlike Zion Pulsar, they won't be totally vulnerable. Though, on the other hand, unlike Zion Pulsar, they won't ignore air, which might be a problem. Anyway, God, slightly further ahead, so he's not quite canonical of you. But he does have quite a few fire pods up, and he has. Well, he was going to get Chrono Porting. He apparently has not managed to actually get the research going ultimately opting instead to get Faro Pods, but he will get Chrono Porting fairly soon, I would imagine. There we go, there's getting Chrono Porting. I don't think he has enough money to get Chrono Porting with... He's getting Chrono Porting several times in the future just in case he runs out of money at any of those points. Interesting way of going about it. Mon Cookie, on the other hand, is actually not a bad way of going about it either. That's definitely a good component of macroing near the present. I mean, it's not the most careful way of doing it, but it is definitely a way that allows for failure. It allows for these Faropod costs to be accounted for by more resource gathering. And, see, the scout forces were destroyed. The Teth and Shin Veer, they were killed. And Zion Halcyons are in place. He will need a couple of those and probably get some... Well, Teth Halcyons aren't the best idea. The thing with Teth Halcyons... I mean, what I said before, Zion Halcyons are kind of more tanks than they are damage dealers. Teth Halcyons are definitely the case. That's definitely the case with them. In fact, all Teth vehicles, in terms of damage output. I mean, Teth Halcyons and Teth Pulsars deal the same amount of damage per second to air. Compared to... Oh, can't really show Teth Veer right now because of the research. But Teth Veer deals more damage. I think it's... It's equal or more, and definitely for cost, it's more valuable. Now, Monkuki, on the other hand, he is moving in. He is not attacking. He, these Farpods are getting in his way, but with a good... Getting a good teleport in there, and gonna be able to actually attack God's base defenseless, but God, on the other hand, is attacking Monkuki's base while Monkuki is defenseless. And right now, God, he actually doesn't have Chrono Porting. Monkuki will have Gate Tech before God does, and God apparently does have it further in the future. He does manage to get it, assuming he doesn't spend any more money. But he, like I said, able to rush back to defend his base pretty easily, and Zion Halcyon's going down, and Monkuki is further back from here. The 949 mark, one of the Zion Halcyons... No, neither of the Zion Halcyons actually able to really do too much. Looks like Monkuki is going to try to teleport them back home, and... Not able to teleport both of them back, only managing to get one of them, and unfortunately that's the most he's going to do. Being at the edge of the Unplayable Pass for him, that is basically an impossible task for him to get out of there. That Zion Halcyon barely doesn't make it. That's a lot of money lost, too. And a Teth Halcyon being built, and like I said, the Teth Fear, just to compare, the Teth Fear is 52 damage per second for about a sixth of the cost of a Teth Halcyon. Like 20, 20, 49 to just 36 LC. That's easily a sixth of the cost when you consider the value of Cube Plasma compared to Liquid Crystal. However, Monkuki does actually have a, well, a decent amount of Cube Plasma coming in. No expansions, though. In fact, I should point out, neither player has really expanded. God just now is moving over his RPs to his natural expansion, but neither player has actually built additional RPs beyond their starting like, 10 or so. Both players have been very focused on military and not very focused on developing their economies, which in God's case was okay, but in Monkuki's case, is really not. Vecchio needs a huge economy to support itself, especially when he's focusing on building a bunch of Halcyon class units, especially especially since he has lost one of them. And that is a huge blow, so he's got to be very careful about this. And 
Teth Halcyon. Unfortunately, neither the Teth nor the Zion Halcyon can see the Cloaked Firepots, but a foundation being built to try to save the day. Unfortunately, not in range. He needs to build one north of the depot, which is going to be a bit risky, but that's the only way he's going to be able to do it. And not quite on range. He has to make sure that he builds it. No, he is continuing to build it to the west of his main base so far. And there we go. One to the north. And now able to spot that Firepot at least briefly. Admittedly, that was the reason why I didn't initially build it to the north was because the Firepot could have killed it right then and there. But there we go. The Teth Housing being used to tank it out. And unfortunately, the Teth Housing not dealing a whole lot of damage. Like I said, he does... The thing is with the Halcyon class is that it's really more effective to use them as part of... And God does have Corona Pointing, by the way. It's really more effective to use them as part of a f larger force. Using them on them, their own will not work. You have to have them... Like I said, they work really well as tanks. They aren't quite so cost-effective for dealing damage. The lower cost units are more effective for dealing damage for cost. They just die faster. However, it doesn't really matter when you have this many fewer units. And like we saw, God does have... Firepods defending his base, and the same Firepods attacking Mon Cookies. However, those Firepods here are... Actually, I don't know if they're... I don't think they're the same Firepods. I think they're... They are apparently new Firepods. God has not sent those Firepods over here. It looks like they might actually all be... Are they all the same Firepods? I... I doubt it. I think the Firepods that were sent in would be different, but it looks like... Let's double check. No, none of these Firepods are damaged. So Mon Cookie, on the other hand, looking back at the unplayable past edge, and... His base being destroyed at the unplayable past. Gold has taken this game. And Monkey surrenders, realizing he really can't do anything against that. Which is unfortunate, because he did have gate tech. And he did have a slip gate. I mean, he could have sent units back, but he really didn't have the units to do so. So that was game one. And I will be back with game two in just a moment. So stay tuned, everyone. Welcome back, Akron fans! This is, once again, round three of the 2013 Christmas Tournament. And we are still with Gold versus Monkuki. First match, Gold took it pretty decisively with a nice little Chrono Port attack. And this game, we'll see what happens. Now it's going to be on Rooftop Showdown. We'll see if we get the same sort of Chrono Porting shenanigans. Gold is on the west side of the map, Monkuki on the east side of the map, and Monkuki is... Oops, sorry. Monkuki is going for Vecure, and I apologize once again, I do have a bit of a cold, so if I sound a little bit weird, or I end up bumping the microphone because I'm rubbing my nose with my finger like I just did, that's why. Anyway, Monkuki once again going for Vecure. Gold is going for Grekum, of course. And we'll probably see what happens later. I mean, the thing is, with Akron, it's a little bit hard to tell what player's going to do until about a minute and a half in chronally. So about... Four minutes acronally. However, what we can see is that the players are not doing too much out of the ordinary. Monkuki is scouting with his opening Shin and Teth Veer, and Gold is just building up economy with his opening forces. Probably going to do the same thing he did last time, which is to lift up these progen forces once the first couple time waves pass, send them to Echo Scout, and then just bring them back in here. Well, Echo Scout, so obviously they'd come back ultimately. And we see all six of his opening RPs. Going on Liquid Crystal, and Monkuki, on the other hand, has not yet set up his RPs. He is not he is fast forwarding towards the future, but he's not quite as far along as God is. So we don't know quite how he's gonna be building up his economy, but probably gonna be similar. Six L RPs on LC is pretty much the way you do it. It's a standard way of doing it. There isn't a whole lot of reason to do anything else unless you're planning on going for some sort of treat cheese strategy. And there is God's liftoff, probably gonna be for an Echo Scout with his progen duo. And Monkuki has, from his point of view, not quite arrived yet. From Gold's point of view, he is going to arrive just about now. So Monkuki will be able to see what's going on if he jumps forward. Well, there we go. Six RPs on Liquid Crystal before Monkuki jumped away. Both players are going for fairly standard builds. Not surprising from Monkuki being that he has to win this to stay in. Otherwise, he's going to be down to the loser's bracket. But Gold, on the other hand, he can do whatever he wants. I mean, he can just do any sort of crazy strategy. And he is actually getting very quick... Q Plasma. Admittedly, last game he did a very similar thing, getting, well, two early Q Plasma RPs, but getting four early Q Plasma RPs is a little bit different. It's just that he is going for very tech-heavy, econ-heavy, and there he is! There is a Reef very early on, 
for early tech. I mean, admittedly, three minutes is not terribly, or three and a half minutes isn't terribly early, but still, that's fairly early, especially being that he is actively under attack at the moment. I think he's going to be changing up his strategy somewhat fairly soon. But no, he is not, in fact, changing anything yet. Getting advanced structures, possibly getting Corona boarding soon. I'm actually kind of curious as to why he is just letting this happen. And Monkuki has jumped back. I mean, this at this particular iteration, the Faro and Seppi are in Monkuki's base, or about to be in Monkuki's base. I almost wouldn't be surprised if Gold just decided to go for a proxy instead of actually building up from here. Making Monkuki think that he's being silly, but then Gold is actually going for... And... No, he is keeping teams in the base. His Echo Scout has been cancelled. In that case, I... I'm not sure exactly what Gold is planning on doing, but he will likely do something to counter this. I mean, there's no reason why he just let himself die like this for no reason. That, that'd be silly. However... I don't see anything yet. Go to jumping back to the 37 second mark. Is he going to be doing anything here that's different? Apparently not. Monkuki, on the other hand, is encountering Gold's progen forces, but this is on the red time. With the blue time, it was going to carry the difference. Checking from his point of view. Oh, no, apparently Gold actually decided to go forward. We'll see on the blue time of exactly what happens, but it looks like Gold is deciding to go for a proxy, while Monkuki, on the other hand, is just not changing anything, continuing along with the strategy that he had before. And... Let's see, blue time wave? No, Gold is staying in his base. He is not doing any crazy proxies or scouts with his units. He just wanted to make absolutely sure he knew what Monkuki was up to. And Monkuki getting an early depot, once again getting an early depot, getting, and it looks like he's committed to it this time, getting a couple resource processors on top of that, and will be getting a Zion Pulsar, a couple Zion Pulsars, right away, I would imagine. Getting a few Zion Veer, and he doesn't quite have the LC to get Zion Pulsars. That's the one thing about this, is that it does require a lot of Liquid Crystal, and like I said before, with the way that even start works, it's kind of tricky to actually get that Liquid Crystal, because you don't have you don't have 300 to start with, you only have 60. And that's much harder to get going with on this whole early depot Zion Pulsar rush strategy. Though I am very surprised that Malakuki is going for a more rush-oriented strategy, given that he lost the first game. Guess he's just decided to go all or nothing on this one. You just don't see that often when it comes to game two for the loser's perspective. Now, Gold, on the other hand, he is definitely focused a bit more early on Q Plasma than he was in the previous iterations. And another Octa being set up, I think this is going to be for defense. We'll see fairly soon. I am guessing defense just because what else would it be for, really, at this stage? And yes, it is in fact for defense. Octa will be set up, and that will just tear apart the scouts. I don't even need to see that. I might see it, but. The interesting thing going on is with the Zion Veer and the Zion Pulsar. There's the Zion Pulsar. A couple more Zion Pulsars will be coming fairly soon. And I'm getting deja vu because I think Monkuki did this in the last game he did on Rooftop Showdown. In fact, I'm very... Admit it, as appropriate as it is to get deja vu in a time travel game, I really am. I, I know I've seen that before. I should probably look through the recorded videos. The last Monkuki game, because I'm pretty sure he did this exact same thing. This exact same rush with the exact same use of the depot early on with the Zion Pulsars. But... I don't know offhand. However, I'm not surprised he's going for this. I'm, I mean, a little bit surprised, like I said before, because he is... This is game two, and he did lose game one. It's kind of all he has going for him, but I'm also not entirely surprised just because, well, Rooftop Showdown's a pretty small map, or at least it's got a fairly small rush distance. It allows for things like this fairly easily, and Gold has clearly committed to a more economic strategy. He hasn't really focused very heavily on a military base, but at the same time, he doesn't have... Well, he's kind of slowed down. I mean, Monkuki is sending these Zion Pulsars right now at the 335 mark, and Gold just getting his Reef, but he's not actually set up to really defend against this yet. And never mind, he's not getting his Reef. He is going for the Sepi for Progen. So we will see some Octos coming in fairly shortly, and I should point out that the Zion Pulsars do not have Skip Teleport, either to avoid giving them away by the sound of the upgrade, or just because it takes forever. Oh, it does take forever. When you're doing a rush like this, it feels like forever. So, good. Double-checking his point of view. He does actually have a few Octobots set up. This is going to be painful, especially since the first Zion Pulsar is uh, well ahead. It has gotten well ahead of the rest of Monkuki's Zion Pulsars. This is a problem. This is a big problem. Monkuki will actually lose his Zion Pulsar if he's not careful. He needs to regroup these Zion Pulsars first, and it looks like he is doing exactly that. He's not going straight in for attack. He will regroup them first. And a fourth Zion Pulsar to join them. With that fourth Zion Pulsar and another Zion Pulsar coming in, though it will take a little while to come, but 
the the four Octopods against four Zion Pulsers. Zion Pulsers will probably win out slightly, depending on the positioning, depending on how he attacks. But no, he's not regrouped first. This is really unwise. Okay, now he's regrouping. That's good. Because he needs to get... Really, he needs to get at least five of these. He needs to get as many as he can of these. Now, Goat, on the other hand, he's got a lot of cash. He's getting even more cash. He's he's harvesting a lot of resources. He can easily get this. And, he, and there it goes. Monkuki has joined the fight. Monkuki has not actually quite joined it yet. Goat's just seeing a mistake that Monkuki had made. But Monkuki is, from his point of view, now attacking. And... Taking quite a bit of damage too. These Zion Pulsers are able to deal quite a lot to God's Force, especially to that Faro. That's pretty big. That's going to eliminate a lot of Progen opportunities until the Arcticus gets on rebuilding it. However, it's still going to be tricky. This is this really is do or die for Monkuki. He cannot teleport these Zion Pulsers away. More Zion Pulser reinforcements are coming in, but too late, unfortunately. However, one of the Octopods does go down, but the other Octopods, there's more than enough Octopods to deal with these Zion Pulsers without too much issue. And. The Zion Pulsers are now just streaming in, and that is the worst way to set them up. Monkuki doesn't have enough money. He could he could transition into something else. He could actually transition and just get a few more RPs and Q-Plasma, and then trans transition in air, probably. I mean, at this point, he is crippled. Oh, oh no, he's not a crippled God. No, God has not been crippled. That Faro did not die. God arranged his forces cleverly to avoid that dying, and it looks like Monkuki has ultimately lost this. Monkuki can't easily transition. I don't know if he's going to build more Zion Pulsers. I think he might, but he really shouldn't. Or, I mean, if he does, he wants to build a ton of them. Give them skip teleport, because at this point, the secret's out. Just give them skip teleport and go. But it looks like Monkuki is trying to transition to something else. Getting a stronger economy, and then from there, getting himself... Probably in a position where he's going to get air units or other higher tech. Well, at the same time, Gold is... What is Gold going for? Gold is getting himself a reef. Seven minute mark, getting a reef, likely to get chronoporting within the next three minutes. And when that happens, Gold is going to be as scary as he usually is. Monkuki, on the other hand, his economy getting built up. He is able to power out a fair bit. He was getting a lot of liquid crystal while he was while he was doing that little rush. So he's not strapped for cash. But he is still a bit behind. He did still lose probably more for he lost more forces for cost than Gold did. By far. I don't think Gold actually lost anything. Monkuki, on the other hand, lost about three or four Zion Pulses. He lost four Zion Pulses. Four death marks in the timeline. Gold, on the other hand, lost nothing. He lost absolutely nothing. All or Well, actually, that can't be right. He might have lost one Octopod. I think he did, because I don't see the fourth Octopod over here. But yeah. That's kind of how it went. So at this point... Gold is pretty well ahead. He's actually going to get very soon. Probably by the 9 minute mark, he's going to have a research. There it goes. 8.53 mark. He has it. Actually, getting it slightly earlier since he can. And Monkuki, on the other hand, is getting air structures. Getting his air control center. He is going for the air transition. Just like I said. And at the same time, Monkuki is going to have to deal with good chronoporting around. That's going to be a problem. That's going to be tricky to deal with. And it looks like... Gold is definitely committed to that. He is getting a lot more Q-Plasma to get his chronoporting working, while Monkuki, on the other hand, sending his Zion Pulsar in. What the heck? Why is he sending that in? He should know it's going to be a suicide mission. I mean, unless he's planning on it that way, but that's... You don't do this with Vecure. Vecure is not a species for suicide missions. They, they just don't do suicide missions at all. Doing a suicide mission with Vecure is a great way to just lose the game. Just outright lose. There's no reason to do it. Vecure is all about keeping your vehicles alive. Although on a side note, it turns out there was actually a slight bug in the way that the resource processors for Liquid Crystal were harvesting that caused their timing to be a bit slower than it should be. So it's quite likely that Vecure actually doesn't need to save their vehicles as much as they do right now in the most recent version of the game. Well, the next version of the game because the actual bug was fixed in an experimental little experimental OCS file that's being tested right now. But it looks like Vecure probably is going to be a lot easier to play once that is done. You won't need to worry so much about saving every single vehicle. Which is nice, because that was an extremely frustrating part of Vecure play. However, the Zion Pulsar does have skip teleport, so it can work as, an, as a scout if it wants to, assuming it doesn't die. Although this is the initial fight, not the fight that Monkuki seems to be trying to do. And God is permacloning, or at least he is trying to do so. At least it's the only thing he can really say for all of these chronoport marks. He is trying to permaclone as best he can all these Octopods. At the very least, he's going to echo in, echo permaclone these Octopods, sending them into Monkuki's base. Now, whether or not they survive long enough, 
We'll have to see, but what's for certain is that there's a great deal of them. There's a great many octopods coming in, probably about a dozen or so. But in this game, that's quite a lot. And, of course, these octopods are going to come in, and they're going to chronoport near this base, and it looks like they're going to... Well, the idea is, of course, to permaclone. Now, we'll see how well this works, because God's ability to permaclone may have been crippled by the way the unplayable past edge has a timeline associated with it, or a time wave associated with it, so it's going to possibly mess this up. We'll see fairly shortly. But, at least on this one iteration, Monkuki has lost everything, so from his point of view, he is taking a lot of damage, but we'll see what happens. Now, God's point of view, we do have the Autobots going in and... No, they are properly chronoporting. I think... Well, God obviously echoed a lot of these chronoports, but it doesn't matter. Monkuki is still throwing in the towel. Not even going to wait if the Paradox resolves. And that is game. That is match, actually. That is going to be our first... That's going to be the first series of round one. So, oh, for crying out loud. Anyway, God able to take round... The first series of round three. Monkuki in the loser's bracket round three. And God into the semifinals, which, of course, I'm sure no one is surprised by. So next will be between Cybernetic Pony and Chitin, so stay tuned for that. And hopefully I won't have the same issues with this window, forgetting which window it's actually capturing. Stay tuned!